Carmen Jerry, what's everybody? What's well, that was a rough start. Uh, how's everybody doing? It's Neil I'm driving in my car, and today I want to talk about the series of uh, avalanche accidents that we have had here in Hokkaido the first 11 days of March. So, four people have died altogether uh, in these avalanche incidents. Uh, on the 11th, the most recent one was on Mount Iote, only about an hour away from here. Uh, two foreign nationals, two uh, people from New Zealand died in that avalanche. Three buried in total. One uh, survived but had a, a dislocated shoulder apparently. Then a little earlier in the month, I believe on the 4th or the 5th of March, on the northern remote island of Dishiri, uh, there was a group of six or seven people. I'll read you the, the details a little later on. Uh, but they had an avalanche. Again, uh, more than half the group uh, was buried or involved in the avalanche. And one woman in her 40s uh, died in that avalanche. And then there was one more that was a snowmobiling party in southwestern Hokkaido, a place called Kariba, Kari, Kari, Karibayama. And um, one of the snowmobilers was caught in an avalanche and died there, a uh, Japanese man in his 20s. So, yeah, bummer. Sad times here in uh, Hokkaido. And my first comment is that this, to me, seems like a pretty rare occurrence for Hokkaido. I've never heard of, you know, four people dying in avalanche accidents in like a 10 day period, less than a 10 day period here in Hokkaido. We generally have, you know, there's there's always accidents and you know, some years it's like one, it's one you know, there's more than one avalanche. I'm sure there's avalanches, but you know, there was a, there was a, someone died somewhere, you know, it's like, oh, big news, maybe two. You know, it feels like it's been increasing a little bit in the last, you know, five to 10 years. But in general, Hokkaido, uh, was, it's not, you know, a lot of times you'll hear news from Europe or Canada and it's like, you know, 17 people died in an avalanche today. You know, like, like crazy numbers, like obviously the mountains are bigger, the terrain, the snowpack, there's a lot of variables, but up until now, Hokkaido also just generally staying cold for most of the season, you know, it's not so much temperature variance and that is a key factor in avalanches when the temperatures go up and down drastically this is going to be a big cause of avalanches so Hokkaido always felt you know fairly I don't want to say the word safe because that's not a good thing to say but you know it never seemed like we had that many accidents and now four people dying in less than 10 days it's like wow what's going on here so that was my first comment. The second comment is that, you know, these things come out on the news, everybody talks about it for about a day, maybe two days, and then it gets memory hold and it just sort of fades into the distance and everyone goes back to normal and just passes on. And it, it seems like it's kind of a shame, you know, these, these, these people, you know, I don't, want to, I don't know if it's the right phrase, but you know, dying in vain, like it feels like there should be more information coming out of these accidents. And then from that information, um, we can all learn. And you know, hopefully we can all be safer as we travel and explore the mountains here on out. So I thought I would try to do that today, share a little information, even if it's just like a little tiny little something that you gain from it. You know, if that's in your brain, the next time you're in a certain situation on a mountain with a group of people, whatever, and you remember like, ooh, you know, I heard about this accident one time and it was a very similar situation to this. I should be extra careful today. You know, that, that little edge uh, of safety can make a huge, huge difference. So. I waited a couple days 
Today I went out on uh, on Google and I, I found some Japanese articles on uh, two of these three avalanches and I translated them to English. I thought I would read them and then talk about it a little bit so that you could, uh, you could learn and understand what exactly is going on. The first thing to point out though is, as I said, the temperatures are getting warmer and we had some really warm days in February and then maybe at the end of February too. So um, there are some dangerous layers in the snowpack right now. Let's see, let's start with the, uh, the former. So on the 3rd of March, a surface avalanche occurred on Mount Dishiri, 1,721 meters above sea level, killing and injuring, uh, well, there were four men and a woman involved uh, in the avalanche and the woman died, the men sustained injuries. The avalanche was relatively large with a width of 130 meters, a length of 700 meters, and an elevation difference of 340 meters. That's pretty, pretty big. And is thought to have fallen from unstable snow that had piled up on top of rough snow that had melted during the warm weather in mid-February. So this is translated from Japanese. You know, the English might be a little off. The, I don't know exactly what they mean by rough snow. It could be like granular snow, maybe is what they're meaning. Um, but basically when they went there and they checked out the situation, there was uh, like a melt freeze layer from mid-February. And that's what the snow slid on. Now, the survey was conducted on the 4th and the 5th. So they were there the day after. According to the research team, the avalanche occurred on the east-northeast slope, approximately 650 meters above sea level, and ruptured a steep slope, 54 degrees incline, very steep, directly below the snow canopy on the leeward side of the ridge. Mm, kind of hard to visualize that, but more than three meters of snow had fallen at the scene, and a slippery surface was observed at a, at a depth of about 90 centimeters below the snow surface. The lower layer of the sliding surface was rough snow, made of snow that had once melted and solidified again. On top of that, dense and heavy snow had accumulated in the form of drifting downwind. In a weak layer test to check the stability of the snowpack, it was ranked in the middle of five levels of strength, requiring caution in snow drifts and steep slopes. The slope, was, the slope that slid, that avalanched, was about 30 degrees. Mm little bit lost in translation on the steepness of the slope there. What it says 54 degrees on one part, 30 degrees another. 30 degrees is pretty typical avalanche uh, terrain, that's for sure. Um, according to the Hokkaido police, seven of the six backcountry tour passengers and two guides were caught in the avalanche and a female uh, in her 40s died. Three people were seriously injured. So, big avalanche, right? Um, seven of the six backcountry passengers, the, 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 the clients, and two guides were caught in the avalanche. And it was at a depth of 90 centimeters. It's a meter, meter and a half. That's like, it's deep. It's deep. It's hard to um, find a layer like that through a casual check. You have to do a, a serious pit check to be finding layers that deep. Um, another thing, and this is kind of important. According to the research team, the avalanche occurred after the main guide, who was the last one on the trail, began to slide. So it sounds like maybe people were crossing a slope and then the guide came out and then it slid. Two of the three people skating and five people waiting at a merging point were involved. Ah, I see. So there were some people already down below. The meeting point was set on a ridge away from the valley to avoid the danger of avalanches and safety measures needed to be reconsidered. So apparently um, it sounds like, let's see, five people were waiting at a meeting point and they felt it was in a safe zone, but it wasn't. The avalanche was much larger than what they 
we're probably imagining. On the day of the accident, uh, another four-person tour group was skiing ahead on this slope. So, yeah, there was another group of four people and they had skied that exact slope. And then this group comes on the slope and the main guide was the last person to go down and it sounds like he set off the slide. I mean, I'm just sort of reading into this a little bit. And it took out pretty much the whole group. Wow. Um, okay, so that's what I got on that one. The woman, cause of death, um, it's not in this story, but I heard this from someone. And you know, avalanches, you could die from injuries, you could die from suffocation. Um, and I heard that this was, it was like impact, like being crushed, like the avalanche was so big and there was so much power that it was like instant. So, whew. okay, the next one. So on the 11th on Mount Yote, an avalanche occurred on the mountain engulfing a skier who was enjoying backcountry skiing. Six foreign nationals were backcountry skiing on the northern slopes of Mount Yote at an altitude of between 650 and 700 meters when three of them were caught in an avalanche and two died. The deceased were New Zealand nationals, a 33-year-old male and a 21-year-old female. They both worked for the same company. The cause of death in both was suffocation. Additionally, the third person was another 21-year-old New Zealander living in uh, an area near Niseko. He suffered injuries that dislocated his right shoulder. According to police, the avalanche occurred on the 11th and it was approximately one kilometer long. That's long. The investigation team that inspected the scene talked about the characteristics of the northern slope where the avalanche occurred. Yusuke Harada, Japanese Society of Snow and Ice Research Team. It's not that all layers of fresh snow have collapsed, but at the time of the survey, there were two weak layers. This is what we know from the snow survey. Hmm. Then Daisuke Sasaki of the Hokkaido Mountain Guide Association who accompanied the team. There's a lot of slipping on Mount Yote, but the slope on the north side is steep. It is a dangerous place because of the stream-shaped terrain. When the snow is unstable, avalanches occur. The investigation team will analyze the data and investigate the cause of the accident in detail. Uh, in response to the accident, the town of Kuchon has issued a warning in both English and Japanese on its website, blah, blah, blah. So I saw a little TV footage, um, you know, helicopter shots of people and it, you could kind of see the gully that they were in. Um, I think what he's saying here is that, you know, it, it's, it was a steep, it says stream shaped. Um, I think that means it's like a, a kind of a deep gully that curves. And that's kind of what I saw uh, on the video footage. So it's a terrain trap, you know, if, if snow uh, does start to slide and you're in a, you're in a tight little V-shaped gully, uh, it's going to get deeper and deeper and faster and faster. You know, if it's a flat wide slope, maybe it's going to spread out, there's more room to get away from it. But um, what I saw was it has a big curve at the bottom. So if that's the case, it was kind of a terrain trap, dangerous spot on the north side. Again, uh, I also read that it was two degrees warmer than average on that day. So we've had these, you know, warming, freezing kind of cycles, probably a similar situation where they had some fresh snow on top of some, you know, weak layers. And, uh, you know, maybe it wasn't like a super deep avalanche, but in that kind of situation, a, a little bit of snow can gather a lot of speed and take everybody out. Um, and three out of the six people um, were swept away by the avalanche. So, in this case, man, 21 year old, 33 year old, it's way too young. Any age, any age is way too young, but that's fuck. That was fucked up. So, um, 
that's what I got as far as information. Now, what can you learn from that? One takeaway I might have that I could leave you with, you know, the the uh, the Avalanche and Nishidi was a guided group. People were paying money to be guided on a backcountry experience, and that happened. The group on Yote, it did not say in the article. I don't know for a fact whether it was a guided group or it was just some friends who said, hey, we all got the day off. Let's go up to Mount Yote. In either case, when you have a group of, you know, more than one person, if it's two people or six people or ten people, uh, even if you're just buddies, someone is sort of the leader. The person who has the most experience or knows the route and says, hey, let's let's go up Yote. There's this great gully. Um, I've skied it before. Uh, it only takes two hours to hike, whatever, whatever. You know, there's, there's some kind of leadership uh, in these situations. And obviously when you're the, the leader, whether you're being paid for it or not, there's a big responsibility there. But if you're the follower or one of the followers and you're just in a group, you know, it, it can be real easy to sort of go, oh, okay, someone else is taking care of it. Someone's got the reins here. Someone's driving the car. And you can sort of shut off your own, you know, warning lamp that says, oh, oh wait a minute, this, uh, this looks kind of sketchy. Or, you know, maybe, maybe we should not all ride down together. Maybe we should take this one at a time. Maybe we should cross this slope one at a time. You know, what, whatever it is. So that's something that um, I think is a good warning from this. You know, this, this is, these are not like some solo person just going out and, you know, or, or two, even two people. It was large groups, you know, and you have group dynamics. It's definitely something to, uh, to think about. Um, and then like that in Nishidi, even if you are in a, especially if you're paying for it and you're on a tour, you know, you, I think you tend to go, oh, these people know what they're doing. Um, but there are situations that uh, are out of control of even the most experienced guides. You know, it, it, it happens. So I think it's good to just keep your, your warning antenna, you know, out all the time. Another thing is uh, it's, it's a good warning to say, hey, let's, let's, let's go back to the basics, uh, practice beacon searches, um, read up on these accidents, stay aware, study, and learn. Um, because I think now, more and more, with these temperature fluctuations in Hokkaido, we're going to see more accidents like this. Um, there's also just an increased number of people going into the backcountry uh, more and more every day in Hokkaido. In Japan, the general population is declining quite drastically, but the backcountry ski and snowboard population is increasing quite dramatically. More and more people going into the mountains everywhere. There are lines in places that there never were before. Um, so that just means more people roll on the dice, you're gonna have more, uh, more accidents. And then, um, final thing I could say is, you know, the powder fever. Everybody has the powder fever or the powder monkey, whatever you want to call it. And I think the more people there are, you, you especially see it like in a place like Niseko when people are trying to get to the peak on a powder day, you know, it's, people are just, you know, kind of freaking out trying to get up there. And you, you definitely um, throw common sense out the window when that happens. So try to remember that. And I guess final thing would be um, a little bit of the blame could be thrown on uh, on social media because social media kind of gets blamed for everything these days. But uh, I do I do think that's a factor. Um, I think it's a factor in why so many more people are going into the powder, looking for the powder, going into the backcountry because there's so much exposure to it now on whatever your favorite social media is. You know, if you're scanning through things, you know, and you're into that stuff, you're, you're gonna see so much of it. Um, it sort of normalizes it. it I know it, it kind of feels like it normalizes these big backcountry lines, open powder fields, whatever. 
A lot of the footage is from, you know, top professionals who've done a lot of safety checks. A lot of it is not, but you know, anyway, I just think that, you know, the more we see that stuff, the more we get accustomed to it, the more it feels like it's normal and not dangerous. But that is also something to, uh, to keep in mind. Don't be fooled by the social media. Okay. Um, I think that's about what I got. That was 20 minutes. Um, yeah, my condolences to the friends and family, families uh, of the people who, uh, who passed away. Um, so let's all uh, spend a couple minutes doing some research. Do your own research, study up on this stuff, and be conscious uh, always when heading out into the wilds. Drive safe, ride safe.